Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. My name is Graham and welcome to my show. And today we are doing something a little bit different. I feel like now every video is like, ooh guys, today I'm doing something a little bit different. And uh, by virtue of that, if every video is different, then no videos are different. But today, we are actually doing something a little bit different. And uh, so here's what we got today. We got an interesting episode for you. It's not millennial money. It's not a glamour. It, it's, it's none of that. It's uh, from Architectural Digest. So I woke up this morning and uh, got this video showing up on my subscription feed. And it, it says, Inside Kendall Jenner's Cozy LA Hideaway. Wait for it. Open door. Wait for it. Architectural Digest. So Open Door, I think, is basically one of these series where they go through these celebrity homes. You get an inside tour of them. And in case you didn't know, it was from Architectural Digest from looking at their channel. They put that in the title as well for SEO, which is very good for ranking videos. So anyway, let's give this video a shot. I actually don't know which one is Kendall Jenner. I, I, don't, I don't keep track of, I don't keep track of these families. Which one is Kendall Jenner? So Kendall Jenner, is the, oh, she's 20, 24 years old. Okay, shoe size 10. Uh, I don't know why that, don't know why that was on there. Kendall Jenner. Which one is the billionaire? Which one is the billionaire, Jenner? Uh, I should know this. Jenner, billionaire. Which one is the billionaire? Kylie. So Kylie is the billionaire one. I should, I should know this stuff. Kylie is the billionaire. Kendall is the, uh, is, she's not a billionaire. Let's see, what, what's Kendall Jenner's net worth? Really quick, just before we get into the video, we gotta have some background on this. Uh, Kendall Jenner net worth. I don't, I don't know how accurate these things are. They're probably not even accurate at all. Let's see, Kendall Jenner net worth. Hmm. Okay, uh, in July 2018, Money reported that Kendall Jenner's worth around 18 million, but celebrity net worth now calculated to be 45 million. So anywhere from 18 to 45 million dollars. So yeah, she's worth a decent amount and uh, so is her family. But anyway, let's give this video a shot and see inside Kendall Jenner's home. And I will give you my perspective as a real estate investor and a real estate agent. Uh, Los Angeles is my market. So I could probably tell you roughly looking at this, like where approximately it is, what I think it's worth. And I'll give you my thoughts on this, my honest thoughts. And uh, it's gonna be a good episode today. So make sure to destroy the like button, get your two free stocks down below in the description because they're free. And uh, yeah, there we go guys, enjoy. Hey D, it's Kendall Jenner. Welcome to my house, come on in. Man, this home looks gorgeous, but you know it's gonna be expensive. You know everything in there is custom made. It's probably like some guy in Italy is like working away for decades to make this little like cloth or something like that, and she just like just hangs it somewhere as decoration. It looks it looks expensive. I moved into this house about a year and a half ago. I renovated it for a whole year. The overall vibe that I was going for was really peaceful. I wanted to feel super calm. <laughs> I love how she calls that like the vibe. You know, the, the style of home that I really want is, is peaceful. Not, not, she, she's not talking about turning this into like a Mediterranean or a Spanish modern. No, 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 just peaceful. But in all seriousness, this, this home looks Gorgeous. I mean, to say the least, this this home already to me looks like a nine out of ten. Maybe even a nine point five out of ten. Kind of the first thing when you walk in, I'm very proud of it. Is my James Terrell. I have always wanted a James Terrell, so I was really excited when I got it. It's so peaceful and calming. What is? It looks like a like a pink orb, like a UFO, just like hanging out in the uh, in the, the front window there. What what is that? Hold on, we're gonna look this up, James. Terrell. We're learning a lot about uh, everything today. James Terrell. American artists. Wow, look at this, James Terrell. Okay, so he does some cool light art. James Terrell for sale. Let's, let's see how much it, yeah, I, I am trying to get into art sometimes and it's just, it's confusing because to me, like objectively, you look at that and I just think that that's an LED light. Basically, it's a nightlight. It's like a giant nightlight. Like you had those as a kid that you plug in the wall. Every every kid has his favorite nightlight or her favorite nightlight. This to me is like the adult version of a nightlight. It's just an LED surrounded by some frosted glass that's tinted pink and a few hundred bucks, right? But let's see how much a James Terrell is. Okay, so first dibs. Dot com is uh, is where a lot of these artists will post like the real stuff at. I'm gonna put a screenshot right up here for you guys to see, but this looks like a second grade collage project. 
and and uh, it's selling for fifteen thousand dollars. Why? I, I, I want to get into art. I really want to be able to like appreciate the craftsmanship that goes in behind this. But sometimes it's just it's it's mind boggling to me that that this is 15 grand. And I bet her thing to sit her egg sitting in the window is probably like thirty, forty thousand dollars. I, I guess if not way more than that, this could be if it's done just for her. It'd be a hundred grand. Wow. And he actually makes these pieces to meditate in front of. It's actually called Scorpius, and I'm a Scorpio, so I hold it close to my heart. That could be a portal to another dimension. That's how they get so much money. They've discovered like some sort of like time travel where they could like zoom up like a year, figure out what's doing well, come back today, and then just <laughs> profit, print money. Gosh. This is my, I guess, formal living room. I made sure there was no TVs in here. So we get into a lot of deep talks in here. We actually hang out in here more than I thought I would. I usually have the fire going, whether it's winter, summer, fall, spring, whatever it is. Yay, pollution! No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I love, there's nothing like a natural fireplace. There are some days here in Los Angeles, they're, they're called no burn days. And, and basically it's when pollution is really bad. They don't want you to go and like add on to that with the fireplace, but her place is is gorgeous from from a, like a real estate point of view everything in this place to me is immaculate and then i have this really cool 1965 radio phonographo i just got it for christmas i'm super excited about it i went to the record shop with my friends we got a bunch of stuff i need to pop into it that is so cool it looks like it was built for the space though i mean how do you get that as a gift and then it's like, oh, let me put that right here. It's like, it's perfectly fit for the space. Someone has to go in and like measure that. Like that's not a gift that someone just goes and gets and you, you place it. It looks like it was meant for the room. Right off the bar is just a really nice kind of dark moody powder room. This though is this massive stone sink that I was like dying for. And it's about 300 pounds. And the guy who did my house basically said it was the hardest part of the entire house was putting this in. Wow, that is so cool. Look at that stone sink. Everything here to me is, is I can't say enough. It's, it's really, it's almost like the, the perfect home. The only thing I will say about this powder room here, there's zero storage. There's nothing. I dealt with that in one of my bathrooms. There's no cabinet space. So you could see here with the soap, they just put that at the very end. It, it doesn't look like really it belongs there. There's really not a lot of storage, but it looks so cool. This is my office area. I hang in here with the people I work with a lot of the time. I don't personally use it a lot, but my girls do. And connected to my office is this really nice walkway. It's actually one of my favorite parts of the house just because of the amount of light that comes into it. It connects to my nice little courtyard out here, which is also one of my favorite places in the whole house. Oh man, I want that. I have a thing for Spanish houses like this. I love it. And the landscape too, right out here, how she did the gravel and some of these just plant, looks like she got like a little olive bush or something, a lemon tree. It's so just, it, it, it's so good. This is a really good house. This was a movie theater for like the first year that I lived here, but I had an idea. I was really stressed out. I was working a lot and me and my friends used to just go in the backyard and paint. I was like, I do that all the time and I don't really use this room as a theater so much. So I converted it and I love it. I love coming in here and just vibing out and making really horrible things, but it honestly lets a lot out of me. And my friends and I come in here, sometimes we'll throw on basketball on the screen, drink some wine and like just paint or color or whatever. We're like really, we're really nerdy. Wow, that's cool. I wonder if she sells her art. You see, she's got a whole bunch, she's got a whole stack of stuff here on the side. I bet she can get more than that other guy. What was his name again? Um, uh, James Terrell. She could be the next James Terrell just doing her paintings and just auctioning them off. Just put, put them up on eBay and see who bids on it, you know? That's cool, it's a cool room. This is my dining room, which I love. There's a lot of woods in here. We kind of did this double rug thing which I thought was really cool, and it warms up the room a lot. That's now the new thing I've noticed in a lot of the really high-end homes, is you take a rug on the, on the floor, and then you put another rug on top of the rug. I don't know who started that, or maybe it was just like they ran out of space, and were like, listen, we, we, ordered, we got an extra rug, and we don't know what to do with it. Let's, let's just put it on top of the existing rug, and maybe nobody notices, and then that starts a trend or something. I, I don't know what it is, but putting rugs on rugs is now the thing. And someone has to take that to the next level and be like, okay, so we got one rug uh, on top of another rug, on top of another rug, 
on top of another rug and to see if you like to stack up rugs so high that you now have like a step up living area. Like you could put the furniture on top of a rug. It's like a foot and a half off the ground. That's gonna be the style one day in the future. I found this table right when I bought the house and the chairs, I think I always liked the idea of mix and matching chairs. It kind of adds a nice depth to the room. That's actually a really cool idea. I never thought about having like mismatched chairs for a dining. It's, it's unique. I think, well, I would only do it if, if like, I happen to have two chairs that just don't match at all. And like, well, at that point, I may as well make it look like that was done on purpose. It's cool, though. My kitchen. This is most definitely the most used room in the house. We are in here almost every single day and night. It's weird to say, like, I'm in the kitchen every day. It's like, yeah, like, where? where it's like, that's like saying, like, I'm in, I, I use my bed every single night. It's the kitchen. It's like that, that's where that's where you get your food. I think I saw a photo of dark forest green cabinets with a really nice marble. I kind of used that as inspo and made this kitchen. I had a really white, just like simple stale kitchen in my last house, which are very beautiful, but I just, I kind of wanted to warm it up and I thought it went so well with this house. I actually really like the green. I have something similar to this, except without like as nice of countertops. But yeah, my kitchen has that like tealish turquoisey color and it looks so cool. Oh yeah, my pot filler. I use this every day. When I was building the house, they were like, do you want a pot filler? And I was like, no, I don't need a pot filler. I use it every day because I'm a tea addict. So it's perfect. Yeah, it's such an inconvenience to go to your sink and fill something up and then take it to the stove. It's like four feet away. You need to have something right there to fill it up. <laughs> I'm just jealous. I'm just jealous because I don't have one. This is my TV room, family room, whatever you want to call it. I have, you know, my really nice cloud couch. Look at that TV. That's massive. That's huge. That's got to be like a 75, 80 inch TV there. Jeez. So down here, technically these are two bedrooms, but I needed the space. So I kind of made these into like a fitting room, which I also kind of call my Hannah Montana room and my glam room. So I'll take you into the fitting room. It's always kind of a mess. And this is where I do all my fittings and kind of. I hate when people say that, like, oh, it's just a mess, such a mess. But meanwhile, look at this place. It's immaculate. Like it, it's looking like you're walking into a high-end designer store. She's got artwork in her closet. Who has artwork in their closet like that? This is my glam room, also a very used room in my house. Everyone in my family has a good glam room. This wall of magazines is something that Kim started a long time ago. We all kind of copied her, and so I'll give her full credit for this idea, but we all have these walls in our house. Makes you feel good about stuff, you know? Wow, that, it's neat. It's very neatly designed. In the hallway on the way to my room, you have these two Barbara Krugers. I bought them a few years ago at Art Basel. They were actually my first probably really big piece of art that I ever bought. And this wall was just so perfect for them. I like really just colorful stuff that makes you feel good. That's neat. See, I would be more inclined to buy something like that than the, uh, the giant adult nightlight. This is my massive bed. I love it so much. Probably the most comfortable thing of all time. It's nine feet by eight and a half feet, I believe, to give you a visual of how big it is. <laughs> Whoa, that's massive. That is, you know what? I'm surprised she doesn't have like a piece of art though above the bed. I think that's the only thing here that's kind of missing. I have these copper energy rings. Everybody always asks me what these are. Not exactly sure what they're supposed to be good for, but someone told me to get them. I have them hidden all over my bedroom. There's one on each lamp up here. You're supposed to put them around your water. So I have these like little water thingies and I put my copper energy ring around them. That's some Gwyneth Paltrow stuff going on there. I don't, I don't know about copper energy rings. That sounds like like a, like a someone's printing money by doing that. Coming up with like a concept like that. Like, ooh, these co uh, normally that would be a dollar. But if you call them like energy rings, 50 bucks right there. Copper energy rings. I, I bet they are actually $50. Let's see. I, it probably cost this guy like a dollar, two dollars to manufacture this. And he's selling it to all the celebrities. Copper energy rings. Oh, wow, that's a thing. All right, so some of the bigger ones, I see them for like $60 for some of the, some of the bigger ones. Copper, copper's not that expensive, but uh, yeah, someone's making money off that. I get a lot of love for my gold tub. Wow, that tub is incredible. You gotta say, we, we have to have an appreciation for that tub. It's, it's insane. And then this is my closet. I don't think I've ever had a closet this big, so I was really stoked about it. Fun fact, I purge my closet at least every two months. I try and go through it clean it all out and it is one of my favorite things to do ever. I feel like a newborn baby. Oh, how much money do you think she's she's just getting rid of by 
I, so like I can't even say it. purging your closet. <laughs> How much money do you think? Like, like every item she gets rid of is like two grand, two grand, three grand, four grand, minimum. So every time she purges her closet, it's gotta be like 30, 40 grand. Just bloop. I don't, I don't know where it goes. Where does that go? Off my master is my backyard. The whole house is pretty much a U shape, so every room almost connects to the backyard. Surrounded by a lot of nature, as you could probably hear. Thank you, AD, so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed the tour of my house. But it is sadly time for the rest to go. All right, this is a gorgeous house. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to figure out where she lives. Uh, I, I sound like a stalker. I'm just curious. My guess, this to me looks like Studio City, maybe Sherman Oaks, maybe Encino area. That's where I'm gonna guess. Uh, let's see, Kendall Jenner home location. Okay, so I just looked it up and I'm pretty much like kind of right on the money. It, it, it's, it's like, it's like, a few feet away basically from where Sherman Oaks is. So I, I count that as a win. It's a really nice house. I like it a lot. I think her design of the house is perfect. There really looks like there's nothing out of place. She did a great job at it. It's in a really good location. And honestly, no complaints and nothing but respect for her. And let's see some of the comments here. Her dining room is a perfect example of something that looks good when you're rich, but bad when you're poor. Kind, kind of true with those mismatched chairs. She always mentions she's hanging out with your friends, but never with her family. <laughs> 478 likes on that one. <laughs> I like this. Every single room. Me and my friends come here more than I thought I would. Oh man, I always go to the comments. That's one of the first things I do every single time I click on a video. What are people saying in the comments? But uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a really fun one. Let me know if you want me to do more home tours like this. I think just it's cool to get an inside look into people's houses. And then it makes it just it makes me feel envious. And I can look at them. I can be like, wow, that's something I could work towards one day. Maybe I could get a house like this. And it just design wise, they, they got some really cool elements in this house that maybe I could do over here as well. Uh, on, on a much smaller scale, obviously, I could, I could do an adult nightlight over here, just like some big, big light that's worth like a hundred grand. I don't know why. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, make sure to destroy the like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Also, feel free to add me on Instagram. I post it pretty much daily, so if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. As in the podcast, the Ice Coffee Hour, new videos being posted every single Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you want to be a part of it there, feel free to add me there. And lastly, if you guys want your two free stocks, use the link down below in the description, and Weeble is going to be giving you two free stocks when you deposit $100 on the platform with one of those stocks potentially worth all the way up to $1,400. So if you want those two free stocks, use that link down below. Let me know which two free stocks you get. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.